Hello, welcome to my channel, Renzo here. Today let's paint a new portrait. Okay, the colors I'm gonna use are titanium white, cadmium yellow hue, cadmium orange hue, cadmium red hue, uh, <coughs> sorry, burnt burn sienna, burnt amber, ultramarine blue, and ivory black. Okay. Hello, Maggie. How are you? Hello, just Adam. Doing okay? Let's sketch. Okay. I'm gonna use burnt amber. A little bit of medium. And this is sketch. Okay, let me see. be the top, the bottom, around here, let me see here, the space for mixing colors, I usually use the same canvas, okay, let's see this side of the face, I'm blocking in the, the overall shape, See the center line, the line for the eyes, the line, the center line of the face. Okay. Let's see how tilted is the nose. Just like this. You know, from the brows to the bottom of the nose is usually the same distance. To the bottom of the nose to the bottom of the chin. Okay. And display displace the mouth. Hello William. Hello Monique. Uh hello uh, Mercy. Just adding is asking me if I have I, I, I have ever tried to draw myself. Uh, no. To be honest, never. I don't I don't even think about it, to be honest that okay let's see I'm blocking her face position of the eyes the nose and the mouth maybe I'm going to exaggerate a little bit of the contrast of this image because this is I mean I love the position of the face but uh, it's, it's, uh, there is no, it doesn't have too much contrast, which it makes this kind of, uh, let's say, a difficult picture to paint. Anyway, I mean, I have to scream down my eyes a lot, and I have to exaggerate, I think, a little bit the, the lights. Let's see. Okay, I think the overall shape is okay. Uh, let me see, let me see the angles here. You know the best way to see these angles, to compare these angles, is just your brush. Put your brush on top of your picture you're using as a model and move it here. That works when you work from a live model or you work from a picture. In fact, I mean, I, I, I learned to do that uh, working from life. Imagine here was my, my canvas, and let's say in this space here it was the model, the real model. This looked away from me, like two meters. But I, I, I used to do this. I used to like move my brush. Let's imagine that the model was here. 
do this and move it to my canvas. And that's kind of the same that I do now when I, I use uh, a picture. Okay, hello, uh, hello Michael White, hello Manuel, hello Laura, Monique is saying I could buy your self-portrait. Oh, well, that's a good reason to paint a self-portrait. <laughs> hello Dita, hello Weria, hello Yoichi. Okay, now I'm going to start mixing co uh, some colors. Okay, basically, I want to start by mixing burnt sienna and white. You know, burnt sienna is, a, is just a dark orange. And if you mix orange, white, and ultramarine blue or black, you're gonna get to this color. I mean, maybe with black you're gonna get a grayish version of this color. Okay, let's see. I'm just thinking if the color is okay. I'm gonna add a little bit of ultramarine blue. Mm, okay, that's okay. I think a little bit of burnt umber. A bit more, I think that's better. Mm, I just have some shadow in this area of the face, a little bit of shadow here, but mostly it's like 80% of the face is just really light. Okay, let me see. I have that color there. I'm gonna do something here. I'm gonna add some white. And okay, I think this is gonna work okay as a light, a highlight. Mm. Okay, okay, thinking about this, I think I'm going to prepare a grayish version. I'll repeat it again, burn sienna, white, and bar amber. I'm gonna add more, more bar amber because I wanna gray down this color a little bit more. Okay, that was too much, I think. See the difference? I'm gonna add a little bit of medium. Yeah, I think this color is better. Yeah. Right now, I know that there are some areas that are more saturated more reddish, grayish. Uh, this color works okay as a ba as a base. On top of this, I'm gonna put more colors. Yeah, that's better. I prefer this kind of grayish orangey color. See for the shadow, I don't have too much shadow, but I'm gonna just create a darker version of this color. Uh, Maggie say do that self portrait and we can beat on it. Oh, that would be great. Yes, Adam Saskina, what's your native language? Spanish. Hello, Function. Now, I'm going to do 
the same burn sina burn umber I think this is too much white yep and that again burn sina burn umber a touch of blue ultramarine blue Step back, okay. More white, more burn, burn amber. I just want to gray down this color. A little bit of medium, and I'm going to add more white. Let me try the color here a little bit. And here. Right now, I just want to see if this color is gray enough. I don't want a saturated color right now. You know, you can I can saturate this color easily by adding more orange okay okay I think that's okay you know I'm gonna I'm going to grade down this color even more I'm gonna add black and white I'm just doing this little bit little little bit of black a little bit of white I'm going down this color more, more white, more black. Okay, let me step back. work on the shadow I can use this for the hair too see the difference between the first color and this Okay, you, I mean, or I'm gonna tell you my plan, a little bit of my plan. For example, I have this grayish skin color, this grayish, uh, darker skin color for the shadow. Of course, I'm going to add more color in some areas. I'm just going to do this just to show you what I have in mind. Uh, let's say I'm gonna just do this. I mean, this is an ex exaggeration, but that's something that I'm going to do I'm gonna blend and I'm going to knock down this but that's the idea that since this um, particular picture is it doesn't have too much contrast it doesn't have too much color but anyway that the, the position uh, the pose is really beautiful and I love the expression and all of that uh, what I want to uh, enhance is the color. Okay.
Okay. Now, now let's add. Okay. Let me think. Let me think. Hello, Marion. more light here no uh, when you're working with a lighter value you gotta consider that you can make this lighter value a little bit saturated than this one okay it's lighter but it's not just about adding white uh, but that depends okay may, let's say that your portrait is too orangey if you add white you're gonna knock down that orange and that's gonna be okay just adding white but since I'm working with a grayish color I can saturate this one okay and the idea is I will have this for example uh, let's say in this area I wanna keep this color here that's this color I wanna use this color next to that color okay now this is gonna be brighter it just could be brighter by being just lighter or I can saturate this you see I can add yellow more yellow more yellow I mean it's up to you how much you saturate this and uh, what do you like if you add more yellow it looks brighter and brighter okay because it's warmer now it's not about painting all over this again I'm gonna do this and this color, the idea is that this works as a light and this first one works as a mid-tone, as a shadow. Okay, in this way I don't have to paint the mid-tone. I mean, it's already my base is the mid-tone. Now, this light, remember, it could, you could have more color here. Let's try something different. Let's add more orange. Uh, what happened here? Okay, I'm adding more color. Okay. One thing, just stop there. I mean, don't go all the way to. Uh, because if you paint with this all the way to the ear, I mean, we're gonna, you're gonna make this flat. The idea is creating volume by having more saturation here, and. Uh, a grayish color here okay now if you add more paint let's say you want to mix more paint and add more paint here just gotta be sure respect that difference okay okay let's see if this orange works here because I mean I did this just to show you but I have to see if the the color is going to work perfectly here. Okay. We have options here working with warmer or cooler colors. Now it's up to you how much uh, you push this about adding more, uh, more contrast uh, between warm and light, warm and cool colors if you want to do that. back just checking out Here too, and here. 
Now remember there's always some areas that where the face is more reddish or orangey depending on the temperature you're working. I'm gonna add some red here. That was too much red. A little bit of white. Upper and lower eyelid has some a little bit of reddish or warmer color. Let's say warmer color because I mean uh, it depends on your face. Sometimes we paint a we can paint a face that's kind of really cool, but the, that means that we need to add a little bit of warmer color on those areas. Okay, let's work on the mouth. Stepping back and just checking. Okay, I'll always think about this, all the proportions, okay? Know that painting is something that you can, we can move on the surface a little bit to the right, a little bit to the left. I mean, as soon as you don't put this highlight like here on the ear, everything is okay. Hello Mirvat, hello Eve. Okay, Maggie. Okay, let's use this bar umber, a little bit of medium, and let's make some details. Check out how tinted is the nose. No, that's okay. I'm adding some red to this burn umber to work here on the base of the nose, the shadow here.
let's blend Back. I'm gonna use this. Uh, I'm, gonna make, I'm gonna use this color here. There's a shadow here I'm using this grayish color, and next to the color, this pinky. Hello Liz, Leslie, oh, hello Renzo, happy to watch live, I normally have to wait that day. Okay, thank you so much Leslie. Hello Kepler. Okay, I think that's better now. Mario is asking me, how do you clean your paint brushes when you're painting oils? Oh, hello, sugar. Oh, okay, I have a... I, um, any, anything that when you put, you, I put a... Uh, Turpenoid, I think. I, it's like a turpentine, but I bought, I bought. I used to buy this in a hardware store, and I just I clean the brushes there, and then you can use uh, maybe anything to. I, I just do that. Sometimes um, when I forget to clean out the brushes, I use thinner, which is really strong. You removed, remove a dry paint on the brushes. I don't recommend that because I mean this smell is really really strong. I mean this. I have here. Um, let's say that I have a ventilated space. That's why you can hear a lot of sounds from my neighbors and all of that because uh, the door is to my to my right. It's not completely closed really because I mean I have a lot of things here. I don't want to just smell all of these things, I need some vent ventilation some ventilation and this, then a couple of meters to the right 
I have the, my door neighbor and the other neighbor does uh, and the sounds go really f uh, the sounds fly really fast because there's a window without any glass or anything and there's a portion here where I don't have any roof that means that the air just comes through this let's say hole on the, on the roof and yeah, keep this really ventilated that was one of the reasons that's why the sounds this all the noise from the street get inside here so easily okay I think I got some skin color that I like of course I can see some two reddish colors there I'm gonna work on them, on them. Yeah, but I think it's gonna be okay. Mm. Now, what about the proportion? The proportions are okay. I think it's okay. What about the likeness? Okay, the likeness is something that I need to work just little by little. It's just a process. Lower process. I have to keep checking the proportions, okay? Because I mean, first I want to have at least the position of the eyes, nose, and mouth, okay? Then I'm gonna work on the eyes, the size of the eyes, the size of the nose. Maybe it's a little bit larger, shorter, anything. Right now. I have this, which I think is pretty good. Okay, I know you can see uh, the the color, the first color that was like a grayish orangey color. It turns it turn, turn, turns out kind of even grayish or greenish sometimes. That's because of the contrast of with red, with the reddish area. The more red you add. Uh, the the first color is gonna turn out more reddish, more greenish, or grayish. Okay. Let's continue working on details. I need to step back just to analyze. Uh, I'm gonna paint a little bit of the hair. Yesterday I was watching a horror movie. Uh, because of my daughter, she she was like, oh, it's Sunday, we didn't do anything together. And we, we were like, okay, what do you want to do? I want to see a movie. Okay. <laughs> Let's see a movie. We ended up watching a movie, a horror movie. We started seeing the movie at midnight. Like, no, 1 a.m. We ended up like at 3 a.m. I miss, I really miss those days that where I can, when I got scared watching a horror movie. It's like, uh, all, uh, it's like it's kind of, everything is kind of predictable and then I, I don't get, I don't get, I don't, I don't get scared so easily with the horror movies anymore. But my daughter, she, she does, she was like, And my wife, she was kind of sleepy. <laughs> yeah. I remember a couple of years ago, I mean, before the pandemic, when we uh, when we used to go to this to the movies. My son and my daughter, they just they having a good time. For me, I, I love to see a good movie. And my wife, she kind of she always always, I mean, starts to sleep at the middle of the movie. She just falls asleep.
Okay, I think this is too reddish, this area. I'm gonna just knock down this color here a little bit. I don't want I mean to paint all this reddish. It's like the reddish or this pinky color is mostly around here, okay? Here and here. But don't go with this ridge all the way down. I mean, there is a, let's say, a gap here. The color from here, it jumps to here. But not this area. Don't go with red all this way or all this way. Okay. And now we have reddish here. And here. It's the same. Don't go with red all the way down to the mouth. Then today I woke up at I think at 11, 11 no no 10, 10 a.m. You know that's so good not to work, <laughs> not to go to work. I mean, I, this I mean, this is a painter life. I used to work like I think I have worked like a couple of times in my life. Life I have to go like from 8, 8 a.m. to 5 4, 4 p.m. when I was a teacher. Eh? The school of art every day for a year yeah. and uh, I mean the, the the difference that 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 time that I worked as a teacher is I, I used to walk from where I was living to the school of art like 10 blocks maybe more than 10 blocks that is like one kilometer and the thing is this this town is in the mountains and I used to walk and watch the mountains with snow all on my way to the school of art every morning it was just amazing and with uh, some animals uh, there because it was a small town And the temperature it was always uh, like in uh, below zero. Really cool, really cool temperature. I speak it in centi degrees. Yes. No Fahrenheit. Uh, Celsius. Speaking in Celsius. And I used to buy some bread, like 20 breads, uh, because there, are, there, are, there, there were some, a couple of dogs on the School of Art. And they were so happy to see me every morning because, I mean, I used to buy those breads for, for them. Eh? Uh, because it was a small town, it's like uh, the dogs. The <laughs> I mean, I was in my classroom eh, with students, and uh, I mean, you can hear that the door was opening, it uh, was being opened, and you say, Who's getting inside? It was one of the dogs. <laughs> He's go, go, walking slowly to my desk and rest on the floor. Nobody say anything. I mean, it was so normal because it was a really small town. And uh, there was a lot of animals. It was, uh, there wasn't any rule about animals. Hello, Samia. Hello, 
Miren nada. Somebody's asking me something aquí. Uh, 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 what kind of brushes? Uh, I use all my brushes are synthetic brushes. Marion says you have a good soul mate. Yeah, I'm just a regular guy. I love, I hate. Yeah. All the feelings. I'm looking for alignments, the corner of the mouth with the iris here. I mean, it's not a line with the iris, but that, that gives me an idea. Hello, Mirin. Stepping back again. Oh, I gotta check out. Uh, now that I'm going, uh, making more details, I have to check out the likeness. Okay. 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 I need to work a little bit on the background, just to uh, work on the contour of the face. I'm gonna mix black and white. So medium and let's work a little bit here. Okay, I'm gonna add a touch of orange. I 
have to narrow this mm. have to narrow this a little bit more Use the same color with a little bit of white to paint the white of the eye here. Okay. Uh, a little bit of cadmium yellow here to make an orange a greyish orangey color and I'm gonna paint the iris just a little bit okay. and let's add the highlights What's the name of the movie uh, I was watching yesterday, Monique? Uh, well, I don't remember the name. <laughs> so sorry. There was I don't remember the name. So sorry. It was a, it was a good movie, but yeah. Mervat is telling me the tilted of the face not perfect. The right one is wider than the the, the reference. Okay, I'm gonna check out on that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know that I start to adjusting, moving a little things a little bit to the right, to the left. I always uh, f focus always about the position of the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. Yeah, I'm trying to keep. I'm trying always checking this angle yeah, and alignments in this area here. If I got this right or pretty close, yeah, that's gonna be um, that's gonna be I think better for to be in the likeness. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm stepping back. I'm squinting down my eyes and checking out with the picture comparing yeah, I'm gonna do something on the this eye especially on the eyelashes I think that's gonna help with the lightness this here do the same with this eye here um, adding black with burnt umber I want to make this darker Yep, yep, yep. That's better. Okay. I need 
to light up this area here. I added more white because, uh, like I said, uh, uh, the reddish area is up here, and down here the color is more grayish. I'm not saying that that's going to be always the case about skin color. I'm just, in this particular occasion, I just want to saturate that a little bit more because uh, I love the position, I love the pose, I love the position of the face. But I know that there is not too much contrast. When there is no much, no much contrast, it's like a limitation with shadows, especially shadows. We cannot add too much shadows because I mean there is not too, too many shadows, and that means that I cannot uh, let's say add more contrast. And when there is no contrast, contrast usually affects volume. Okay, and trying just to uh, kind of balance that with color. What I mean by that is, let's say you don't have contrast between light and shadow. But anyway, you cannot want contrast without having contrast between light and shadow. You cannot contrast between cool and warm temperature. Okay? Or, uh, or just saturate one color a little bit more and desaturate another color. And the idea is to do that in purpose in order to create contrast. Usually the contrast that we mostly use obviously is light and shadow. Yeah. But let's say that I want to exaggerate this even more. Uh, for example, one way of doing that, that would be this. I'm just doing this, this to show you uh, how much you can push contrast. I'm, go I'm going to erase this because I don't want to get this far with contrast. But this is kind of a violet and you can use this in the shadow area. Let's say there. And I don't know if you can notice that. You see the color? Okay, you can exaggerate the color all in all the shadow area. You can make it in some even in some areas you can make it really pure. Because uh, this color is just in the smaller areas, you're not gonna see it like that clear. Like oh my god, look at those purplish or violet colors in the face okay uh, right now I don't want those colors I prefer to go warmer let's say at red and orange and exaggerate this warm color on the shadow okay I'm, I'm saying that one way is wrong the other way is not wrong no no I'm not saying that I'm just saying what I want to do now okay just that it's just what you want is gonna work. In one way or the other, speaking about contrast, color contrast, you can make work one way or, or the other. I mean, it's just about balance. It's just, if I, uh, let's say that if you start adding this violet everywhere, like a lot everywhere, all, I mean, that's 
it's kind of killing the surprise. I mean, this is a color that uh, maybe we don't expect to be so pure in some areas. But when we see the, those colors there, uh, it looks we realize that works perfectly in those smaller areas, in small proportion. Okay. But at the same time, what are we doing by adding this? We are pushing contrast between warm and cool colors, okay? Since we don't have that much contrast on the painting, on the picture. And remember, you can always just copy the picture and that's it. Now, copy the picture, it means just spending more time mixing the colors. Yeah, just more time, maybe you can spend an hour, two hours, three hours mixing the colors. That's okay, everything is okay in painting, I mean there is no, always no, there is no right or wrong. But I repeat, it's just what you want, it's just what you like. And of course what you know. Another thing that uh, sometimes I add to a painting when I see that it's kind of, uh, let's say, boring. I mean, not image is boring, but let's say, let's say that it's boring. That would be add more impasto, okay? more thick paint. Again, this is optional, okay? It's just you think that helps your painting I think that helps my painting I'm right or wrong okay it could be for some people right for some people wrong it doesn't matter <laughs> Some thickness on those areas for me add a little bit more to the painting. And like I said, it's not always like that, it's just it depends. I mean I'm not saying that I'm gonna leave this like this, I'm just saying that I'm gonna add more paint. Oh, it looks looks really f nice this I love that well, I was planning to paint with a palette knife one of these days but that's so I mean I don't need to say that that's gonna be too difficult. I'm gonna blend that a little bit and I will continue working on the likeness. I'm gonna leave this like that. I, 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 you know what? I like <laughs> that. Uh, for now, I'm not saying that I'm gonna just leave it. I don't think I'm gonna leave it. Just for now, I'm gonna see this a little bit more.
work on the eyes again. Stepping back, just to see what the area can fix. Okay. Work on the eyes again. Okay, hello, Tan. Uh, Terry is telling me looking good, but right side of the face looks fat. Okay, thank you. I'll check out that. Hello, Thomas. Okay. Hello, Honey. Hello, Saumitra. So thank you. Okay, let's continue. Okay. Brush is not okay. Okay, I need to light up uh, this area a little bit more.
I think I have to open this eye a little bit more. Okay, well, let's move to the other eye. I have to erase a little bit of this highlight, otherwise it feels too much. Okay, I see some kind of greenish color here. I'm gonna change that, I'm gonna add some more orange color. Let's see how that works. Just here. have to continue working on values on this eye. I can see that this is a little bit lighter. Lashes. Mm, okay, the uh, the brows. Mm, okay.
what are you saying? I'm looking for, I mean, these shadows and lights here and there, so this uh, mid-tones basically are, it's about a lot of mid-tones, for example, here, it should be a little bit lighter. step back see okay I have to reduce this yeah. mm. okay you know what I'm going to soften this edge I'm softening but I'm kind of pushing this uh, with the background color in this way I soften the edge but at the same time I just I'm narrowing this area uh, this shadow is just too dark I need to light up the shadow okay what else I think I got I got close with the eyes yeah. The nose, I think the nose is gonna be there. I need to work on the mouth, the values. I mean, mouth is obviously it's too dark. It, you know, at the beginning, I don't care about colors. I just work with two colors, two values, or sometimes three values. Now I have to start thinking about the right value, value and color. I'm gonna light up this. not just about adding more white you know I'm making this more reddish Looks okay, looks okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, let's work on the teeth. I do that, I step back, I compare. Okay? Uh, I don't know, I mean, there's no detail there, just a couple of brush strokes. Well, enough to insinuate something on the mouth and as soon as I do that I step back I compare and squint down my eyes and compare okay I'm gonna leave it I'm gonna leave this those brush strokes there for a minute that area there. I don't want to touch this yet, I'm not so sure about that. Okay, there's a reflected light on the, the chain, on the, on the jaw. Okay. 
Mm. Let's make it just. Just gonna make this uh, a thick brush stroke. I mean, uh, speaking in terms of, uh, imagine that you're using a, a pencil, and instead of using a, a kind of zero point five millimeters millimeters pencil, mechanical pencil, and using a two millimeters. Okay, later, later I'll be back here and see if I gotta move that reflected light a little bit up or down. Okay. Something is not okay. It's not okay here. The yeah, another thing that I think is affecting a little bit uh, what I see here is just I need some highlight. Here, okay. Maybe I'm gonna blend this you know, or I'm gonna darken this highlight. I just need to see it. This, okay. Right now, I need to put this because that's what I see there, and I just do making best highlight just to compare. Mm, okay. I'm using this for the likeness. I don't want a pinky color here. I'm using this color. It was our first, my first color. I'm just adding white. Okay, she has like a, a, high, a light here, and yeah, I think that's okay. And this is more curve. Yeah, I think I need to add more light here and here. Okay, I'm not trying to make this pinky. You see the difference between the color. Okay, I'm just lighting up that that area just by adding white. Okay. Now let's blend everything a little bit. Oh, hello Joyce, how are you? Thank you, Janet Harding. Thank you. Just Adam Renzo, what is your technique name? This is just a La Prima. I mean, it doesn't have any particular name. It's just I gotta say that this is just a common a common process. You know? You're gonna see some painters maybe mixing three, four, five, six values. I start with two values. You're gonna start with three, four, five. At the end, it's the same about the color theory on the face, about warm and cool colors. Color theory is color theory. It's just, it's just that, I mean, uh, uh, and contrast, okay, contrast, contrast implies, impl I mean, when you speak about contrast, it's about lights and darks, warm and cool, uh, areas sharp and lost areas, about edges, everything that is about contrast is what? It's gonna help us to create this illusion of three-dimensionality of anything you paint from an apple to a face to a human figure it's gonna be the same always and this thing about blending is just a 
let's say a personal taste you're gonna blend you blend I mean you wanna just go with more paint a more painterly approach that's, that's not gonna make the painting better or or worse it usually doesn't affect that doesn't affect the result it's just what you like For blending, it's about the brush, okay? A soft brush. I usually I use a round brush, and this the hair is ruined. I mean, this brush is like this when it's new. You see the difference, okay? Don't throw away your uh, your used brushes. A la prima or direct painting? Yes, Monique. Here you can. I mean, this is a la prima eh? or direct painting. Yes, that's the technique. Oh, okay. Uh, what book do you recommend to understand color, light, and shadow? Oh, okay. I mean, I uh, I have read. I'm not gonna say that a lot of books, but I always find good information in all the books. I cannot say that I recommend one in particular. I have read really small books, and I think it depends. It's just about that sometimes I don't know. It's easier to understand some things about color theory in some books and another another thing I mean it's just I don't know how to explain that I, I don't know what book to recommend and the only book that I, I mean I keep recommending is the color theory of Johannes Eaton because that I think that's maybe the easier uh, book to understand contrast Yeah, but it's more about, well, you know, color theory implies a lot, but it's more about contrast, because with contrast we uh, understand, we create a volume. Yeah, and about mixing colors, uh, any, any, okay, mixing colors is something that is just, you're going, anyone is going to learn mixing colors just by, just by mixing colors. It's just something that it takes practice. The problem is, uh, let's say, color harmony. Color harmony implies the, this thing about temperature and all of that, and how uh, the color change. You know, colors, they, 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 they don't live alone. They have to interact uh, one, one with other color, and, and especially the 
uh, the, the problem is always about controlling grayish colors. What we like, what uh, what everybody knows, like muddy colors. Okay. And usually, uh, when we paint anything that we see, it has a lot of muddy colors, a lot of grayish colors. And that's what I say harmony, because harmony teaches us to control that, the balance between the, those muddy colors and saturated colors. Now one thing that happens when we blend is that we kill, we kill contrast a little bit. Uh, we have to go back and add the highlights and shadows. And if we over blend, I mean, that's going to be a little bit difficult. That means that we have to go back and like work on the contrast again. and checking out and checking out all these lights I just using pure white see the, the likeness mm, okay mm, okay, 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 okay. need to work on the mouth was too much light. I'm gonna work on the ear. Using this color, remember this was the first color, it was kind of an orange 
a really grayish orangey color. Okay, I think I need to work this area because her face looks a little bit slim, thin, yeah, and I think this is about this shadow here. I have to go like that. Yeah. Making this, and I'm gonna use this reddish color. I'm gonna put it just next to that color. Yeah, I think that's gonna help. I use this one again. Make this a little bit dark. to step back and see the whole face I'm going to check out uh, here and there and, uh, let me see the forehead What else, what else I need to work on the wind of the wind of the nose I don't see it I need to see that to compare Let's work on the nose. Mixing here black and cameo red. A lot of red. Okay, remember that that area in the nose. Uh, it's not just about making this red a uh, dark. It's about, about making this dark, but at the same time, create some transparency there. And you see, it's no pure black. As you can see, it looks like a, a, a wine, like this, that's really dark, dark red. I'm going to add more red to the mixture. Okay. I'm adding 
more red Now I want to soft this edge. Okay, I'm going to add some orange Just here to the base. A little bit okay. I'm mixing orange and red. Now, like I said before, you can add some violet if you want. Okay, let's add a little bit of this. I have a little bit of violet here. Just a touch, okay? Do you see the color there? I love those touches of color. That obviously that you don't if you don't look for those colors you're not gonna see those colors there a little bit here a little bit there okay I need to light up the nose a little bit more. Step back. Okay. Mm, looks like I'm doing okay. Adding more orange. I want to saturate this area a little bit more. This area. Okay. Mm, what else? Mm, just comparing. Let me step back. I still need to work in this area. Uh, it's about narrowing that area and at the same time working on lighting up this here because it's too dark.
Yeah, for example, in the, working on this area and thinking I have to light up that that this color. Okay, here I was thinking I need to light up this. I can add a little bit of yellow to warm this and make this pop forward a little bit. In this area, it's not. I'm, I'm just thinking about the opposite. Just adding white. Okay, and lighting up this. But at the same time, it's a lighter color, but it's, uh, it's a kind of mute, a mute color, a grayish color. Uh, I mean, kind of difficult to keep the difference, but that's what I'm trying to, to do. I mean, I'm going to add a little bit of red, but definitely I don't want this reddish area to be as reddish as this area here I need to add more red here uh, it's just because obviously uh, I want this to pop forward more okay. it's just uh, follow the highlights for, for example you're not gonna put a highlight like this in this area because that's in shadow okay if the same uh, the same if you wanna just make this to reset this area that means that the colors here have to be more muted I mean grayish cool uh, you, gray down, you gray down the colors or you cool down the, those colors and you do the opposite for the area that you want to the, the area that you want to pop forward more Yeah, but that's kind of tricky because sometimes we want to add color, let's say uh, here, I'm going to add color, a pinky, and if I, I do this and what I'm doing is adding more color and making this to come forward a little bit. And that's something that we need to control. For example, I don't like this right now. I'm going to gray down that. I want a little bit of pink. Yeah, not that much that means that I have to be back and forth here with paint until I see that I see a little bit of reddish but it's just gray down enough okay and doesn't pop forward and doesn't affect that area for example I can uh, if I add, let's say, more red here, that's gonna be okay. Yeah. Making this any 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 area any area that you add more contrast, more saturation, more more. I mean, you make that area more chromatic. You're making that just come forward more than the rest. Now control, you see what I'm doing, I'm adding more red, now it looks too pinky. Yeah, yes, I mean, I gotta go back to the color, I have a, here this grayish color, and go on top of this and try just to, like I said, go back and forth. of this okay I'm gonna grind down this color light up this grayish color I'm gonna put it on top of because I don't want this, it's just too pinky. Okay, that's better. Now, obviously, if uh, let's say uh, I'm painting on the primer, but it doesn't mean that uh, I mean, I, I'm not gonna retouch the painting maybe in a couple of days. 
I mean, that's, this is it's not a challenge painting on the Prima. Painting on the Prima is just, just painting in one session. It's not like we, we cannot go back and make any retouches. Yeah. And for example, on top of um, on the Prima painting, you can continue painting or you can continue adding glazes. And that's going to change the color, that's going to help a lot. A lot. To make subtle changes maybe that we cannot make when we paint on the prima. One of the reasons sometimes is like we start to accumu accumulate more paint and more paint and making the painting thicker and thicker at, at the point that we cannot control this. Okay. Adding this color, it's kind of reddish. It's just a little bit, okay. Okay, I need to light up the mouth, it's still too dark. I need to work on the jaw, the ear. Okay, that's good. Okay, if you, somebody of you want to feel, feel like supporting my channel, you have the Patreon account. My Patreon account where I uh, we paint alone with my patrons. I paint alone with my patrons. I mean, so Mitra is asking me, do you recommend going to an art school to learn? Uh, yes, I mean, of course. Uh, one thing that, I mean, everything that any art school is going to teach you, you can learn, learn it by yourself. Okay, the difference is like in an art school, is like going to a gym. You're gonna be, it's a con constant training, daily training. It's not like a uh, when you train or you work up, work out at home, and you say, "No, today I'm not gonna do any exercise. Today I'm tired." No, in the school of art, is as a daily thing. It's practice, practice, practice. Okay, I'm pretty sure you're gonna get all the information just uh, that you need just by watching YouTube videos. I'm pretty sure. But the training is the part. The training is just. Just that, I mean, it's, this is about repetition, repetition, repetition. Yeah. I always keep saying that maybe you can learn about color theory by reading a book maybe in a week. But that doesn't mean that you're mastering color theory when you are in the practice, because that's the difference. Okay, I'm gonna blend a little bit more on everything. Just clean all my brushes. And another thing, to be honest, there are some information that I have found in YouTube videos that I thought at that moment, okay, I mean, that's, that's, this is something that I have studied, but I didn't kind of uh, understand it really good. And now, now in a five minutes, five minutes YouTube video, I understand it. And I say, wow. <laughs> and that just makes me realize that uh, if you're self-taught, I think uh, you can learn a lot. Okay, but you gotta put it to practice. You have to practice.
Okay, I'm gonna check out. Uh, this eye is lighter than this one. I have to check out on that. Okay, I still need to light up nose. I need to light up this area here. The mouth is the mouth. The lips are too dark. Okay, I think I like. Uh, it looks too greenish this color, but I love it. Okay, I think uh, those colors, that difference, uh, works really way, really, really good when we want to create this illusion of uh, this area is turning here. The head is turning, and that greenish color works really good. But let's say that that intensity is okay, or maybe I'm gonna knock down that greenish. But definitely I'm gonna keep it a little bit grayish. Yeah. Uh, what about the mandible? Getting close, but definitely I see some problems in this area. Uh, let's see, I think it's about adding more light here. Yeah, the shape of the eyes, maybe I should open this eye a little bit more. Okay, now what else? Yeah, the nose, the nose, yes, I think, I think the nose is a little bit darker here this area okay. still too many things to fix First, I'm going to dark one eye. I'm using just bar umber. I'm gonna make this a little bit darker. Sorry about the noise. That's my baby's neighbor. more light to the sclera
comes too much red I'm going to knock down the color I'm going to soften this. Okay. What is some highlight here? And I'm just softening this. Okay. Let's put some eyelashes. And using burn amber. Beautiful. Eye, eyelashes for the other eye. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna speak about the school of art. I love to remember my student student years. It was so amazing. The, the, the thing about the school of art, the school of art here, it was like uh, I had to be there the whole day. From uh, used to, I used to paint from nine to one p.m. and then uh, for from three p.m. to six p.m. it was about theory, art history, all of that. And from 6 to 9 p.m. it was about drawing. Every day it was the same. It was like a, a living there. Yeah. I was there the whole day. For six years it was just five years but I repeat one year yeah, because I uh, I started working painting portraits uh, and I didn't have the time I mean it was like studying or the money and I said okay money I didn't get paid that much much but I mean for me uh, at my 20s it was a lot of money yeah. it was enough to for what I needed at that time for beers <laughs> and what else more beers yeah. and what else more beers <laughs> And of course, the first thing that I used to do with the money was about buying materials, yeah? 
brushes, all your paints. And then I started to work at home. I think it was I was in fourth, the fourth year. I started to paint those portraits at home. At home, I used to go just to draw at night. And and then I didn't do anything that year. Like it was just painting portraits and drawing at night. But that was a really good training because it's different when you paint for somebody than when you paint for yourself. Uh, every time that you paint for somebody, you paint a commission, you're going to be judged, okay? And that puts some pressure on, on you to try to uh, get the painting better, working on the likeness, putting more time on. And I remember another thing it was in my, yeah, I, I, I think it was in my 20s, uh, it was, I think, 20 or 19, 19, I think. Uh, one friend told me, okay, do you want to go to Colombia? And I said, to paint for three months. I said, okay, and then I went to Colombia. I was, I was there for uh, like three months just painting, painting still life. I remember I used to paint at night, like, uh, I mean, I started to paint like at 4 p.m. to like 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. At 6 a.m. I used to go to bed. I wake up to take breakfast at like 12. I used to go, go out and I don't know why, I mean, uh, sometimes so, so, sometimes I just prefer to paint at night, like really late. Yeah, but obviously that changed when I, uh, I got my family, I have two kids, I have my daughter and my son and obviously I had, I had to change my schedule I have to wake up at 6 a.m. and yeah, that change family change everything for better I think because the thing about working at night all the time I think it wasn't so good for my health yeah you just I mean, taking breakfast at 12 a.m., 1 a.m., and eh, and going to bed at 5 a.m., I mean... But you know, at that time, it's really good because I mean, nobody called, nobody called, called me, nobody, no, nothing. It's like you don't exist for anyone. That's the perfect time for just paint, do whatever you want. Okay, Tita. Bye. Good night. Hello, Michael. Oh, that's good, Michael. You've been in a football training. 
Hello, Art or Dan. Uh, what's your opinion about using grid for the portraits and other paintings? Uh, that's okay. I mean, uh, a grid, projecting, traced, all of those are just tools. We are free to use them. I was watching a video uh, about uh, a week ago. I don't remember the channel. I mean, it was about drawing. And this guy was showing how to draw with uh, something that is called Camera Lucida, an application for a cell phone. And you can see, let's say on the screen, a, a transparent image. The, the hand is transparent. The drawing is transparent, everything is transparent. In this way you can uh, draw on top of the image. It's kind of the, like projecting the image, it's the same. Every time I paint a commission, I use a grid. I used to, uh, I used to, uh, I had a, a projector, I remember. It was a long time ago. And one day I just needed the money and I sold it. I sold it to my, one of my friends. And I tried to use a, use a grid. And that's what I use every time I paint a commission. Uh, Renzo, what are your favorite YouTube channels? Okay, there, is a, there, are a, there are a lot, but I think you all and me, we share the same, I think, the same taste for YouTube channels. Eh? I mean, I, I'm pretty sure you get the same recommendations. I was watching lately um, about composition and landscapes. I was watching a channel that is the this guy, his name is Ian, Ian Roberts. And of course, I, I see uh, Andrew Tischler, Cesar Santos, draw, paint, mix. And what is, I mean, uh, there is a lot of Stephen Bauman. Both, the reason one is Stephen, Stephen Bauman, uh, the other one is Stefan, I think, Bauman. I mean, both channels. And what else? Scott Waddell. Okay. Well, I mean, pretty sure there are more. I was watching a channel that is called Mad Charcoal. And uh, another channel is called Sketchy about drawing and I remember a channel I mean I found a channel that's a, a guy with uh, his mom I mean they both have uh, a drawing channel and I think that's the he's the one who draws or both. I don't know. I, I have seen just a couple of videos. I have to see more videos. 
I think he's from England. I'm not so sure, I don't remember so, so clear. And Paul Foxton, yeah? Paul Foxton, I used to see Paul Foxton, he does live streams. And of course, maybe one of my favorites, one at the moment is David Lafer. What else? I mean, uh, who is uh, uh, there? Is so many channels. Oh, there's a guy, Ken Goshen. Ken Goshen, I think. And we have to keep studying, learning. I learned from those channels. There is always something new to learn. Okay, the teeth, that's the difficult part. I think I'm just going to insinuate this a little bit because that's I'm using gray. If you have any channel that you want to recommend me, uh, just let me know. Let's see. Oh. Uh -huh. 
Thank you, Soran Subach. Keep the green, Paulinius. Uh, uh, yeah, I said I, I'm gonna keep the green. I mean, I was thinking just to knock knock down down the green a little bit, but definitely I wanna keep it. I don't, I don't, uh, because that's, that that adds this uh, illusion that the face is turning. Yeah, it makes this area reset and make this pop forward. I'm gonna work here in this area. More light here. I need to work on the ear. Uh, I think the mouth, if I soft the edge, that's going to be better. And soften this too. Remember softening edges, okay? Sharp edges, thus, they may be one of the worst things that we can do at, to any painting. Every time that you, we sharp an edge, we kill uh, depth, we kill volume. Okay, it's about controlling how some areas, we need some sharp areas, but just a small uh, spots on the painting. Okay, what else? I need to light up this. Um, up this too. Well, this shadow is okay but it's just I have to just reduce this shadow. Okay, that's okay. And maybe kill down this kind of reddish here. Pinky color. Okay. okay, let's work on the ear. Mm. Okay, 
for instance. Oh, I keep forgetting I have uh, an application. This is a buy me a coffee application. If somebody feels like want to invite me a coffee, it's always welcome. Uh, William says, when students talk about glazing after getting so far into their painting, what is this? Can you explain, explain it for me? Oh, okay. Just give me a second. <laughs> I need to see something here. Just a second. something here okay speaking about glazing uh, you know glazing is just applying transparent paint it's uh, as simple as that I mean every time that you're gonna add transparent paint uh, that's gonna change the painting just a little bit Okay, that means that we have a lot of control every time that we work with glazes. And uh, the painting, I mean, you need to wait at least a week, okay. uh, depending on, on how much paint, how much, how thick is your painting. But let's say a week. Uh, it has to be dry to the touch, okay? And then you glaze. And with your glazing, if you don't like something, you can just take some paper towel and just uh, take off the paint and clean out, clean anything and try again yeah. okay it's gonna be imagine that you're gonna be working like uh, a watercolor on top of oil because it's just like that it's so liquid so we have to add a lot of a lot of medium to glaze and for example uh, you, you don't want to work or you don't want to add those reddish colors on the face you can just work the skin just with one color this orangey grayish color and you just mix red and white make it really transparent and add to these areas that's going to be a glaze and that's going to change the color okay now uh, what I used to do with glazes I used to add let's say a combination between a thick paint and a glaze because I want uh, it, it depends what you want let's say for me I uh, in this particular painting let's say if I want to add a glaze let's say that add this a pink glaze to all this area flat okay and on top of that I'm going to add uh, some thick paint not as thick as this right now and I'm gonna blend both okay the glaze that's gonna be really transparent the other application is gonna be a little thicker or without any any medium and you and I soft I blend that okay I used to do, do that some, sometimes when I want to light up some areas and exaggerate the volume one thing that we have to consider that every time that we glaze we darken little by little our painting okay and you have to consider two types of glazes one is going to be opaque and the other is going to be transparent opaque that means that you're adding uh, let's say pink one pink is just red and white okay uh, that means that that's opaque because it has white uh, but if you add red alone 
really transparent that, that's going to be transparent without any white and now for glazes uh, for plain glazes it's better if you check out the tube and look for transparent pigments for example one color that works really good for glazes is alizarin crimson it's transparent okay uh, ultramarine blue is transparent I mean, you can make any color transparent, but those colors are even more transparent, a little bit more transparent than others. And that's going to create a different effect because that's the, those colors just let, I mean, show the, the color beneath uh, better. I mean, the combination is different. You have to try it, I mean, and see the difference. Usually in the tubes, uh, there is a, a little square that indicates that the color is transparent, the pigment is transparent, or opaque, or semi-transparent. I think all the brands they have a little square, I don't know. If, let me show you if I have, have one here. No, it doesn't. Uh, I don't see the square in my tubes, but used to see this little square. Oh, Marion is asking me what was the white brush you use, use, just use recently. Well, these brushes are number zero, synthetic brushes. Maybe the bigger one is this one, it's number eight, synthetic brush. All of them are synthetic brushes. Thank you so much, Michael, for the super, super chat. Okay, you re just uh, remember every time that you glaze, you're gonna darken the color a little bit. Un unless you work with just opaque glazes, that means that it has a lot of white in the mixture. But usually painters, they love to use transparent glazes. Thank you so much, uh, Eve, for the coffee. Thank you so much, Michael. Okay, let's continue. What, what time is it? Okay, I plan, you know that I usually I plan to work like three hours. My top is three hours and a half. I gotta go a little bit faster.
uh, paint uh, for painting an ear that's perfect using glazes you know the ear is kind of pinky and sometimes it's kind of difficult to control how pink we paint it uh, if we go with too much pink maybe it's the ear is gonna pop forward too much Added the paint, adding paint and softening. Oh, hello, sunflower. Thank you, Jorge. Okay, for the people that speak Spanish, I have a Spanish channel too. Just look for my name, Renzo Castaneda. Uh, I know that I've been, I didn't make too much videos from my Spanish channel lately, but I'm planning to go back. But anyway, there are a, there are a lot of videos there, and there are a lot of live streams. Okay, let me see, I need to work. Let's compare again. Mm. Okay, I think that's better, yeah? The neck. Need to work on the neck. I need to make the teeth a little bit bigger or softening this, I'm gonna soften this I need to make this a little bit darker. Okay. Yeah, now I'm gonna work on the forehead. Not a little bit of this, almost nothing, okay?
See what else, what else, what else? Okay. I think the ear, I'm gonna just leave the ear like that. I'm gonna insinuate the, the, the earring. Uh, let me see. Something like. Okay, what about this shadow here? Hmm, okay, I need to reduce the side of the face a little bit, a little bit. I'm gonna mix more black. White, a touch, a touch of orange. I think that's okay. Now from here. I would like to put more time on this painting. More than three hours, but no I have things to do. Okay, okay, what else, what else, what else? Okay, 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 I think I have seen something. Hmm. Uh, how do they do they give you a coffee or anything? Oh, there is a link in the comments up. You press coffee and that's it. I mean, you use thinners or linseed oil and turpentine. I, I mixed linseed oil and turpentine, half and half. Thank you, Monique. Monique, Monique answered the question in the comments. Please turn down the light value in the chain. Okay, I'm gonna check on that.
Okay, okay, okay. Let me see, I'm stepping back. Works. thinking just thinking comparing and comparing right now here and there Let's see Okay. Good night, Marion. to light up the teeth, eh? Okay, I, I need to put something here on the teeth. Something is not okay. Yeah, I think this is more angle.
and uh, I have this kind of lost and I'm just thinking about adding more adding a little bit of sharpness here in this area okay just a little bit Okay. I have no contrast now, but I'm going to light up the neck, okay? I don't like this. It's too dark. It was just too distracting. Okay, I think getting close to the end. I'm going to just insinuate a little bit of this area in here. I mean, I don't want, it's too bright just that, that area in this. I just want to make a little bit. That. I just I don't want I don't want to add more. I don't like the, the way that it looks in the picture because it's just too too bright. I think that's it. Mm. It's, it's, it's almost three hours.
Okay. Mm. okay. I, there is one thing that I'm just um, been doubting uh, is uh, here in the nose. I know you notice my shadow in the nose is darker than the picture. Okay. Uh, that of course make the nose put forward a little bit more because there is more contrast in the edge you see the edge there is sharp okay the difference between this edge here and this here you see the difference here is kind of blurry and the value even is kind of there is some dust and here is different now uh, maybe it's too dark yeah? I'm just sharing a doubt I have uh, in order to maybe leave it there or just maybe light up that now, now of course I want uh, I don't want just to make half like the picture just a thin line because I'm exaggerating things a little bit a little bit okay? I mean it's not that much you know the exaggeration that you see is mostly on the lights and and okay a little bit the color is different here the color is different here okay uh, this thing about the nose I mean always trying to make the nose to pop forward and that's why I add always a little bit of more color or uh, I make that a little bit sharper okay but that's something that I just uh, like I said, you have to go back and uh, back and forth, retouching and retouching again and again until we see that works uh, for the painting. I mean, it's not like it's a perfect copy of the picture. I mean, nobody's gonna see, nobody's gonna compare my painting with the picture. I mean, yeah, it's gonna see the painting alone, and just you gotta see the the, the effect on the painting. Okay. Another thing that I want to retouch is just she has kind of a bump here. It's a bright a light there. A little bit here. I'm not using too much paint. Okay. Just gonna I mean, it's not a bump, I mean, that's the shape of the forehead. Maybe a little bit more. I added this with a palette knife. I didn't move that too much. I like it. Okay, what is? I ca I have to keep this kind of soft, the edge, sharp here. Okay, soft here in this way. I create a difference between this and this. The intention, of course, I'm gonna repeat is making this pop forward and this reset. Okay. I mean the, the same with the ear I mean I would love to work more the ear but the same values I don't want to add too much contrast to the ear because I don't want you to go and you see the portrait look the, the, to see the ear because it's too reddish or it, the lights are just too bright I don't want that right now I want to make more details to the ear but I, I just want to keep it just like like it is actually kind of mute without highlights in this way when you see the, the painting you see directly to this area yeah I think I think that's it yes I mean I could be here 
two more hours, but uh, I mean, I don't want that. Maybe I'm not gonna make it better. <laughs> Another thing, the shadows on the ear, uh, you have to add more chroma, make it more orangey, more reddish, some touch of color there. Okay, that's gonna add some transparency. Okay, what else? Hey, that's it. Okay, thank you so much. I think that's it. Uh, we love to put more time. check out again for the last time And narrowing this area a little bit. Okay, and another thing I need to light up this just. Mm, I see something on the nose. 
Whoa, 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 whoa. Yes, I see something with the nose. So different. I'm keeping this sharp, remember, because I want, like I said, I want this to, I want to make this to pop forward. Okay, that's it. Yeah, that's it for real. <laughs> that's it for real. Yeah, I gotta go. Thank you so much. Take care. You all. Okay, bye. Take a beer, Renzo. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I'll do it. Okay, see you tomorrow, bye.